welcome to another edition of Just Before You Go to Bed, Preparing Souls for Heaven. We thank God for what He's doing, and we know that this night God is going to touch your heart. We'll be receiving some beautiful messages from people, people calling in to say that God is touching their, their lives, and we feel encouraged. Please, if God touches you, please write us. It encourages us to go on doing what God has called us to do. God bless you. God has called us to prepare souls for heaven. Heaven is our destination, our ultimate goal. In Jesus' name. Today, you know, last time we talked about the Word of God and uh, the Word of God as a weapon of warfare, spiritual warfare. And uh, today we want to look at what can the Word of God do for you. I believe that every Christian must be, must be deep in the Word of God. Every Christian must try to study the Word. The Word of God is the power of God to salvation. Romans 1.16. It is the power of God to salvation. Just go into that and, and, and the Word of God can never fail you. Do not depend on prophets. Do not depend on men. Do not depend on people to tell you what God is saying. Depend on what God is telling you through His Word. Men can help confirm that for you through the Spirit of God. But first, try to hear from the Word of God. There are so much benefits of the Word of God. Today, I want to look at a few of those benefits. And, and you'll be so shocked at what you can get from the Word of God. One of those benefits of the Word of God is healing. You see, we are quick to run to doctors. We are, look, I'm not trying to say doctors are not good. It's good. You go to see your doctor and that when necessary. But I want to assure you that proper healing comes from the Word of God. Even when you're going to see your doctor, you can still stand on the Word of God and God can bring the hidden things to the know. I uh, you know to the four and, 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 and the doctors can quickly help you. But I want to tell you today that Jesus, the Bible tells me in Psalm 107 verse 20, he says he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destruction. Now, the first thing is that if you use the word of God, the word of God can bring healing into your situation. In, no matter what it is, even, the, even when the doctors have not found a cure for anything, incurable diseases can be healed. I personally have seen God heal people of cancer. I've seen God heal people of diseases that the doctors are amazed that such, such have such things have happened, and, and, and I want to assure you today that there is no fast. There is, there is no, uh, no exaggeration about this. The Word of God is still in the business of healing today. When the, wicked one plans, when the wicked ones plan your destruction, the Word of God can break them in such a way that God can deliver you from destruction. And he says, he sent his word and healed them and delivered them from their destructions. Every destruction set for you this night, I repeat, every destruction set for you this night, the word of God is going to encounter it. The word of God is going to destroy that destruction itself and deliver you from it. In the name of Jesus, the word of God will be released on you this night. I'm going to pray for you for healing. Oh, it excites me to pray for people for healing because it's a promise of the word of God. He sent his word and he healed us of our diseases. In the name of Jesus, I believe that healing is part of God's plans for us today. Every part of our body that is sick, God is going to bring healing in the name of Jesus. I believe it and I've seen it happen and it's going to happen for somebody this night. You may be doubting me, but just believe and stay this night and you see what's going to happen by the end of this program. In the name of Jesus. The Lord is in fact ministering to my spirit already about somebody watching me today is your day hallelujah just repeat after me say today is my day hallelujah say today is my day amen now uh, uh one of the things the word of god can do for you it can prevent you from sinning whenever sin want to come your way the word of god will echo through your spirit and it will go through your mind immediately and you can counter sin each time Satan brings a sin to your mind, the word of God that is hiding in you will, will be activated automatically. 
it will come to your remembrance immediately and you can say no and you call forth the word and as you activate the word of God, sin will back back. Let's assume that you're in a place and you've seen something that is attracting you to steal, the word of God could suddenly come. Thou shall not steal and it will, it, it will be a shield for you. If you say it's not true, go to the word of God, Psalm 119. Psalm 119 verse 11 if you go to Psalm 119 verse 11, you will discover a secret. It say Psalm 119 verse 11. Oh, praise the Lord. Okay, I found it. Psalm 119 verse 11. It says, Thy word, it said, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. Oh, beautiful. Are you being plagued by sin? <clears throat> Are you at all time being overcome by lust? Is lust trying to destroy your life? Hide the word of God in your heart. Consume more of the word. The more, the more of the word you consume, it has a way of helping you fight sin. David said, I've hid your word in my heart that I may not sin against you. I pray today that you will hide the word of God in your heart, that you read and read and read and read and read and read at all times that all you think is just the word of God. You see, it's like a man who is always watching Chinese film, you know, in those Chinese films, karat, you know, karat film. And sometimes you can tell people that watch a lot of Chinese films because sometimes they, could, they can just be walking on the road and they will do, ah, you know, <laughs> such a stupid thing, you know, because they are so filled with, 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 with those thoughts of those films that they begin to manifest it. You see, some children are so violent because at all times they are watching violent films and soon they begin to exhibit violence. You know, I remember when I was growing up, in Port Harcourt, in a city, in that city called Port Harcourt, around King Jaja Street. We used to have a boy called Chinese. You know, everybody called him Chinese. He watched, he used to watch Chinese film a lot, and, and he used to call his hair like the, like the Chinese. And at all times, he would just behave, behave so strange. And at all times, he's ready to fight. A very little thing he wants to fight. Why? Because he has hid those films in his heart, and they begin to manifest. So it is with the word of God. The more you hide the word of God in your heart, the more you fill your heart with it. It will prevent you from sinning. May that be your portion in the name of Jesus. I'm excited for somebody here today because I'm, I'm encouraging you to love the word of God. And as you do that, your life will never be the same again in Jesus' name. Uh, another thing is that the word of God can give you peace. The word of God has a way of bringing peace to your life. Oh, what a mystery. You can ask me, how can the word of God bring peace to my life? Uh, let me prove it to you. The Bible even tells me in Psalm 119 verse 165. Let me, let's, let us look at it together. 119 verse 165 is a mystery. 165, 119, Psalm 119 verse 165. It says, great peace have they which love thy law and nothing shall offend them. Woo! Beautiful. Great peace, great peace have they which love thy law, and nothing shall offend them. There is nothing that shall offend or overcome a man that loves the law of God, that loves the word of God. You have such peace in your heart. You know, the word is so powerful. I remember a time I was flying, uh, from I was going to, to 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 Nigeria. I remember from the UK as I was going, I was in this plane and we ran into such turbulence. It was so bad that people were praying. I saw people bringing their beads, you know, and began to do this and praying. And a lot of people people were calling on their gods, different things. And uh, I was busy laughing. Somehow peace came upon me. I took my camera and I began to take pictures and. And the guy by me felt I was crazy. No, because I knew that God has sent me on an errand and I was never going to die in that plane because I must fulfill what God has sent me to do. I knew that plane was not going to be my coffin. I knew that was not my last journey because I knew God wanted me back. I had peace. The word of God will be peace in your heart. 
and not just peace, the word of God can, can confront any situation that comes against you. He said, great peace have they which love thy law. Oh my God, I remember another time I was fly, flying from France to Port Harcourt. And I was in this, you know, they used a very a small, a small plane, a very small plane. And we were, we were less than 40 people in that plane on that particular day. And we ran into a very dangerous turbulence around the Sahara. It was so bad, so bad. And, you know, the plane was just, you know, going like, like, like a piece of paper. It was so hard. And I remembered the word of God. He said, you shall sit to this mountain, you know, uh, be that removed. And I remembered what Jesus did when he spoke to the, uh, to the sea. He said, he said, peace be still, you know, to the storm. I said, peace be still. I just stood up in the plane and I shouted. He said, in the name of Jesus, storm, be still. Within seconds, the storm just went. <laughs> and the people in the plane turned around looking at me and said, are you a pastor? Are you, are you a pastor? <laughs> Don't say, who are you? You know, uh, it's just that uh, the word of God was in my heart. And, and I remembered what Jesus would have done on what he did. I, you know, I said, what would Jesus have done? I did exactly what he would have done. I copied from what he did according to the word of God. Great peace will you have if you hide the word of God in your heart. If you allow the word of God to rule through your life. I know you're not able to sleep, somebody watching me. You just can't sleep because you've not hid the word of God in your life. In fact, do you know that, in fact, somebody came for counseling, you know, once and told me that they couldn't sleep. I just felt the Spirit of God tell me to tell them to go and read the Bible. And the moment they started reading the Bible, they fell asleep immediately. You know, Satan wouldn't want you to even read the Bible, obviously, and then you just fall asleep. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. I want to encourage somebody watching me here today. I know this night is a night of breakthrough for you, as I will bring you back to reading the Word of God in the name of Jesus. And, uh, uh, Jeremiah 15, verse 16, the second part of verse 16. Jeremiah 15, the second part of verse 16. He says, thy word. He said, the word of God is joy and rejoicing in my heart. You know, uh, do you, uh, are, are you suffering from sorrow? The word of God can bring joy. He, he said, the word of God is joy and rejoicing in my heart. You know, I remember... Once I was studying the word of God and suddenly, you know, I read something and I stood up, I started to scream, I started to run, you know. I said, hallelujah, I was shouting. And my friends came and said, what is happening? I said, look, I, I, the word of God just hit me here and I, I was excited. I started to run around, I started to scream. Look, if you know, if you know what the word of God can do on a man, you go read the Bible at all times. Are you sorrowful? Pick up a Bible, begin to read. You may not understand, but just read. The Word of God is powerful. It is so strong. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is somebody watching me, you have sorrow. This night, there will be rejoicing in your life as you pick the Word of God. This night in the name of Jesus. Uh, my God, my God, my God. The Bible tells me in John 8, 31, another thing the Word of God can do for you is that the Word of God can set you free. And you ask me, how is the Word of God going to set me free? That is easy, simple. Can I read it for you? Uh, it tells me that in John 8, 31, it says, If you continue in my word, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. If you continue in my word, if you continue with the Word of God, you know the truth. You see, a lot of people are deceived in churches and other places because they do not know the Word of God. They do not take what they are taught to go and check it with the Word of God. Somebody comes to tell you you can divorce your wife, trying to, try to uh, 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 justify it with Scripture, and you accept it. It's because you do not know the Word of God, because you do not understand the Word of God, that the Bible tells me that divorce I hate. God hates divorce. Even where you are permitted to divorce, it's not God's perfect will. Which one will you choose? God's perfect will or your own will? No, God's perfect will says he hates divorce. I want you to begin to think again in the name of Jesus. Um, hallelujah. 
he shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. As you study the word of God, you begin to understand that there are things that you're doing that, uh, that, that is leading you to bondage. Automatically, you stop those things and you begin to receive your freedom. If you study the word of God, you begin to understand that there are things about the word of God that will expose life to you. You begin to see lots of things you do that are not right and suddenly freedom begins to come. In fact, there are things you do not need to go through any kind of deliverance in the hand of any man. The word of God is your deliverance. As you begin to read it, your eyes begin to open. You begin to understand. I want to encourage somebody here today. And God is your strength. God is your salvation. God is the one that is seeing you through today in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 I, I also want to take you to another thing. He said that by the word of God, aha, uh -huh, the word of God works in you effectively. It effectively works in you that believe. If you believe in the word of God, it works in you effectively. If you believe in the word of God, then it becomes more effective. If you don't believe in the word of God, it will not be as effective as, but if you believe in it and you read it, it becomes very effective. First Thessalonians 2, 13. The second part of it, 1 Thessalonians 2.13, if I'm to paraphrase it, he says that the word of God effect, effectually worketh in you that believe. Uh, it, it, it causes change. It brings effectivity, effectivity into your life. The word of God. The word of God is awesome. It can bring something new into your life in the name of Jesus. Another thing about the word of God is that it is profitable. Hallelujah. He said the word of God is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, and for instruction. If you look at 2 Timothy 3, 16, 17, the word of God can do a lot of things. It is doctrine. It is doctrine. So if you want to look at the best doctrine, if you want, you know, your, your, your church can teach you something, take it to the word of God and see if it is the right doctrine. Or else some, people, some of us are operating on the wrong doctrine because somebody said it. And not the word of God. You know, there are a lot of quotations we quote today that are not in the scripture. You know, and when you really go to the scripture, you find out that those things are not in the scripture. If you want to understand what is perfect doctrine, go to the word of God. It's for reproof, it's for correction, it's for instruction. If you want instruction in your life, go to the word of God. The word of God will teach you. It will bring discernment. It will, the structure of the word of God will instruct you. You want to know where to go, what to do. Go to the word of God. You shall hear a word at the back. Say that is the way. You know, the more you study the word of God, the more you go into revelations. The more you go into knowing things that you never dreamt that you could know. You know, I, I, I had a, a vision a few days ago. And I was able to see a machine that has never been manufactured. It has not been manufactured by any human being, but God showed it to me. And uh, what I mean, it's not been fully manufactured. So I called a friend of mine in the United States, and I began to share this vision with him. And to my greatest surprise, God was already telling him that thing, and he had already started producing it. You know, he just showed me the prototype, what he's manufacturing already. And for him, it was a, it, it was it was a a, a a a confirmation that what he's manufacturing is going to work. Praise the Lord! God is awesome. You know, uh, uh, God can give you instructions and. And, you know, uh, God can tell you how your ministry is going to go. God can tell you who your wife is. God can tell you who your husband is. He, I mean, he can give you instructions in life. You know, uh, God can tell you, look, this kind of friend is not the best friend you should keep. You know, uh, uh, God can give you complete instructions on your life through the word of God. It's the word of God that can tell you certain things. I do remember reading the word of God and I came across a scripture says, do not keep friends with an angry man. I never knew, you know. And since that day, I began to know that anybody who is an angry person cannot be my real friend, uh, can be my real friend, you know. As you study the Bible, each day you begin to have an understanding. It was when I was studying the Bible that I came to understand that the best way to love God and walk with God is to forgive your enemies and pray for those that hate you. And then it changed my life. I started to pray for those that hate me. I started to pray for those that gossip against me. So when I hear that somebody is walking against me, I begin to pray for the person. I begin to love them. 
I begin to, to, you know, instead of praying against them, instead of asking God to discipline them and kill them, I came to understand that God is God of mercy. I begin to pray for their salvation if they are not born again. And I see it happen. And I see God cause change. That the enemies now turn out to become friends. Those speaking evil against me turn out to be working for me and begin to do things for me. I began to see it as a power of breakthrough. You know, these days we have people who... They just go to church. All they think is about how their enemies should die. You know, how people that hate them should be removed from the face of the earth. Have you forgotten that the Bible says it is not the will of God that any one should perish, but they should all come to the knowledge of God? Are you through your prayer sending a man to hell instead of praying for his salvation? Then what kind of Christian are you? Oh, some will say, oh, it is better uh, they die than for me to die. But have you forgotten that it's written, touch not my anointed and do my prophet no harm? If you're a real child of God, no man can kill you. Nothing can kill you. The enemy will come and bow down to you. The enemy will come and worship your God. Oh, my king, I just want to thank you for what you're doing today, for this word you're putting in my mouth, in the name of Jesus. Let us look at Hebrew 4.12. Is another thing the word of God can do. It says, Hebrew 4.12, if I want to paraphrase it for you, it says the word of God is a discerner of thoughts and intents of the heart. Hallelujah. You know, the word of God is so strong that it can judge the hearts of men. It can tell exactly... You know, you can be so engrossed in the word of God that people can come into, can come in contact with you and you can begin to tell exactly what they are planning to do. You know, I remember sometimes, you know, I could be so engrossed in the word and somebody can come into my office as he's speaking to me and the Lord will just tell me this person is lying. I'm able to discern immediately that they are lying. And when I confront them immediately, you know, they, they, you know, they tell me the truth that they are lying. And uh, uh, it is nothing but the power of the word of God being put into action. Praise the Lord. This night, uh, I want to tell you, first of the thing, we said that the word of God can bring salvation. Isn't it one of the things we said, that the word of God can bring salvation to a man? I pray today that the word of God will bring salvation to you. That the word of God will bring salvation to you in the name of Jesus. Uh, I'm bringing the word of God to you. He says that he... That soever confesses his sins, he's faithful and just to forgive. The word of God says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Today, I bring before you everlasting life to your bedroom. I'm bringing everlasting life, the word of God. I'm bringing Jesus to your bedroom this night. Jesus is coming to visit you this night. I'm asking you to just give your life to him. Invite him this night into your life. Just call upon him in the days of trouble and answer you. There is trouble today if you don't accept Jesus. There is trouble today. Just call him and he will come. And he will cause changes to come into your life. Therefore, I'm calling you today in the name of Jesus. Be, be, just understand me this night. Will you want to give your life to Jesus? I'm calling you. Will you like to give your life to Jesus? Accept him today. I bring you eternal life into your room. I bring eternal life into your home this night. Will you accept Jesus as your Lord and your personal Savior? If you want to do that, will you want to pray after me? Say, Father, I am a sinner. I accept Jesus being the Word of God into my life today to wash me and to cleanse me and make me whole. Forgive me of all my sins and write my name in the book of life. Thank you for accepting me in Jesus' name. Praise the Lord. You have now become a Christian. Your name is written in the book of life. And this night, I thank God for bringing you into the kingdom of God. And it is well with your soul in the name of Jesus. I want to pray for somebody this night. Father, I pray that the word of God will encircle somebody this night. 
I pray the word of God will bring healing to somebody watching this night. The word of God is a defense to your life. As you want to go to bed this night, as you pick up the word of God, may the Lord speak to you this night through his word. May the Lord encircle you with his word this night in the name of Jesus. I read somewhere in the Bible when it says, when I sleep, the word of God watches over me. May the word of God watch over you this night in the name of Jesus. Father, just stretch forth your hands and begin to touch this screen. If you can't touch the screen, just straight for your hands. Uh, I see, I feel the power of God flowing, 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 flowing through my hands and touching somebody. I uh, see, 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 yes, that is electric, that's electric current hitting you now. Yes, the power of God is hitting you. Yes, yes, it is nothing strange. Yes, praise the Lord. Father, I thank you. I thank you for, for, for these breakthroughs. God is baptizing you in the Holy Ghost. Yes, yes, it is. Father, I thank you for what you're doing for somebody baptizing somebody in the Holy Ghost. Oh, it is awesome through television. I never knew it could be like that. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for what you're doing for somebody. I thank you for healing. I thank you for healing. There's somebody watching me. You have some back waist pain, waist pain, lower back of your back. The Lord is bringing healing. The Lord is healing you now. He's healing you. He's healing you. He's healing you. Accept it now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Father, I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you. I give you praise. There's somebody lying down watching me because you have a pain at your back, you're unable to stand and walk. Now stand, stand, stand and take a walk because the Lord is there. You can feel fire. You can feel fire down your spinal cord. Father, thank you for that healing in the name of Jesus. Oh, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. And may you receive whatever healing you want to receive this night in Jesus' name. Thank you for watching this program just before you go to bed. I cover your dream state with the blood of Jesus. May you continue to shine and have a good night sleep. May God bless you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So many are oppressed at night. Now, the word of God will arise like fire and hammer to stand in your defense to give you a good night's sleep. Sins that you're carrying, the guilt of the sins you're carrying, just give them over to me. For this understanding, you shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. While you are studying the word, that your deliverance could just come. God could just give you solutions to the problem. God has given Pastor Mike the mandate to speak his word into the lives of people to prepare them for bed. Just before you go to bed, Jesus is Lord and heaven is our destination. Watch us every Tuesday, 7 p.m. and Fridays, 7.30 p.m. here on Ben Television. Watch us just before you go to bed. God bless you for watching. We hope this program has blessed you. If you've been touched and have a testimony, please let us hear from you. Have a good night's sleep and God bless you.